can you see or we may not do this is just for verification uh, to verify yourself that you computed correctly what you wanted to compute. So we can we could skip all this top line, right? It's uh, not needed. But we are going to use it here just uh, in the first examples. So we start with C0 D equals one uh, and exponent zero corresponds to the first one. Then we square, squaring uh, it means uh, C is doubled and D it's uh, squared, one squared it's one. Then because the exponent is one, we are going to um, add a one to the exponent, which means multiplying the base with uh, in the current results, the results in this, so we get three. Further, you go to the next bit, it's a zero. So it means we just double here, one times two is two, and we square three, three squared is nine. Then we get again a zero. Again, we just double this two times two is four, and nine squared equals 81, mod 11 it's four. This time we can compute and get the real values. Then we go to the next uh, exponent, the next uh, exponent bit, it's a one. So it's a one, which means we if we double four, getting eight, which means we square four, four square is equal to 16, which mod 11, it's five. And because we have a one, we multiply with the base, we multiply five with three. So five times three, it's 15, which mod 11, it's four. And so we multiply with the base here. On the top, we add it to one in the exponent, that's what it's equivalent with. So we get a nine. Then we have one more one in the exponent, which corresponds to squaring, uh, doubling the exponent nine, becoming 18. And, and four times four square, it's again 16, which is again, mod 11 is five. And because what we got uh, in the exponent was a one, we add a one to the power, which means multiplying five times three again, five times three, just as before it turns four. Then we go to the next zero in the exponent, oops, which corresponds to um, squaring again, uh, which means doubling the exponent, we get 38, and we square four, four square like before, it's 16, which is 11 plus five. And now we are at the last bit of one, which means we double 32, getting 76 and we square five, which is five square, um, five square is 25, 25 mod uh, 11 is 22 plus three. So we get a three. And um, now because it's a one, we are going to multiply the, with a base, which means three times three is nine, and we get the result nine. And now we are going to check, right? Did we get the right result? Well, we can check against the example we had last lecture, three to the power 77 equals, right? Three to the power 77 was equaling um, nine, as you see. This is also the result we got uh, with the left to right exponentiation. So we are getting it now with the right to le left exponentiation. We are getting nine, so um, which means it's uh, it's correct. Okay. So uh, we if the first bit equals one, well. You can put as many zeros in front of it as you want, right? So 
putting zeros in front of the exponent doesn't change the result. You can put as many zeros in front of the exponent as you want. Right? Because a number, a positive number, you can write it with as many bits as you want, right? So let's say you want to write five, it's one zero one, that's five. But you can put as many zeros as you want if it's positive. A positive number has to have zeros in front, right? Is it clear? Understand? So we are computing three at power 77, which is equal with three at power. Uh, you can write it without uh, a zero in front in base two. But I like to put a zero in front, and you can put as many zeros in front as you want. So we start with zero, uh, with C and with D, and we use a bit this time left to right because we are in the left to right algorithm. So I'm going to do zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. Okay. So we start uh, at the beginning, the bit is zero, so the exponent is zero, and three at power zero is one. Right? That's what we start like that. And that's why I'm putting a zero in front to explain you why we start like that. And you can have as many zeros as you want. You could put one more zero in front if you want. And guess what? It will, as many zeros as you want, would keep our values unchanged because a zero means we double the value. So two times zero makes zero, and one square makes one. So on the top, we always double times two, and zero times two is uh, keeps it unchanged. And on the bottom, um, we square and one square is unchanged. So as many zero as you want in front will change. We keep the value unchanged. So zero it's a good initialization for C and D. One is a good initialization for D. Next, we see this bit of one. So we are going to again multiply with two. Zero multiplied with two will be zero. As always, when you go to the right, it means you are going to the right. And first, we put a zero here uh, when you go to the right, which means we uh, double here and we square here and we get a one. But because it's a one, right? Because it's not a zero, but a one. I'm going to add the one in the top, which is which means I'm multiplying with the base here. I'm going to say one times three equals three. Okay, next we go one more bit to the right. One more bit to the right. We are going to be here. So we just add a zero. Adding a zero means we are doubling. So we say two times one equals two. And here three square equals guess what? Nine. We are mod five, so we don't like one, uh, nine. We are going to say what? Nine mod five equals four. Thank you. Uh, then we go, we don't have a one and we stop just here. We go to the next zero. Next zero means we do. We multiply with two on the top, get four, and we square here four square, each, which is 16. 16 mod five equals one. Thank you, Axie. So uh, 16 mod five equals one. And at this moment, uh, we are done because it's just a zero, and we go on. Next bit, it's a one because it. We always treat it at first as if it would be a zero. So if it would be a zero, we double the four, getting eight, and we square the one, getting one. And then we keep track that it's a one. And because it's a one, we add one to the exponent, becoming a nine, and we multiply three times the one here, and we get a three. And again, we go to the right. And I'm going to, again, it's a one. 
one means again we double whatever we had here getting 18 and we square the three getting nine which is nine more five it's four and now we keep track that it actually was a one so because of so one we add the one to 18 getting 19 and we multiply four with three getting 12 which mod five it's two Then we move the next one, it's a zero, so we do just a basic step. We multiply with two, two times 19, it's 38. And two square is four. And at the end, I am having the last one, which again, we we use in two steps, first like a zero, which means we double 38 getting uh, 76. And we square four getting 16, which is as before, mod five, it's one. And then we keep track that it's a one, which means we add the one to 76 getting 77. And we multiply this with a base getting three. And that's how we get the result of the computation, OK? Uh, let's do a couple of more examples. I'm now going to let the class interact a little bit and uh, do it for me, OK? So let's see a computation from which we are going to also learn some new lessons. Yes, you check C. If you arrive at 77, it means we did it right. We didn't make an error. And the final va value of D here, 3, is the correct result. Very good, uh, Asi. Asi. OK? So that's the main idea here. I want to introduce a couple of more observations that are going to be useful in the next algorithm. Yes, you can verify the result by Fermat. Uh, so let's do, that's a good example. Here, yeah, so let's compute three at power 77 with Fermat mod five. So this is equal with three at power what? So uh, P is five. With to use sperma, we say P minus one equals four. So 77, you write it as a power of four plus something. So a power of four smaller than 77 would be 76, right? Plus one. 76 is a power of four, right? 76 must be equal with four times 19. Very good. And so this is equal with three of power one. What five? So equal with three mod five. So you see, we have got the same result as in our previous computation, right? So here we were able to compute with Fermat theorem and we're able to do that because we're computing modulo prime. In general, we may not compute modulo prime, so Fermat may not apply. We were lucky that I took a prime and I'm taking primes in my examples here particular such that you can easily test the time that we are right at the end with Fermat here. Then we can, uh, we are going to frequently have to compute fast exponentiation for non-prime numbers. And at that uh, moment, you are not going to be able to verify yourself with Fermat because Fermat will not apply, but we know that we are doing right uh, because the proof was not based on primarity. So let's, let me 
propose a new computation for another lesson. Okay, so I'm going to uh, let me enter a different uh, whiteboard. And in this whiteboard, I'm going to compute 3 at the power 8.0 modular. And by the way, I'm giving you the decomposition 8.0. It's uh, 101. It's 5 times 16. So 5 is 101. And four zeros in base two, obviously. I'm no longer writing those, you know, there's a mode over there, mode 11. So we are still in the left to right algorithm. Zero, one, zero, one, and four zeros, nothing else but four zeros at the end. So I'm going to Start computing. We see and D. What is the first C value? So for the first exponent, when you have seen just a zero, it's zero. Thank you. And the first D, it's a when you compute just three at power zero, that's the value so far, it's equal to one, right? So this is equivalent to three at power zero. Next, we go to the one. What do we do with uh, we see we so when when it's a one, we have two steps, right? Because it's one. First, I see if it would be. Thank you, Mohammed. We double it. So two times zero equals zero, and one, which corresponds to doing what to the d. What do we do with the D? We square it, thank you, Axi. We square it and we get a one. Then, uh, because it's a one, uh, the exponent becomes what? C becomes one. Yeah, we add the one to it and the D becomes three. We multiply with the base because it's a one. Then we get a zero, and therefore, what do we do with the exponent? We double it, thank you. So we double it, and the value itself, when we double it, what happens with D? We Queries. Thank you, Mohammed. So we square it, which means what? Three square, it's nine. Mod 11 is still nine. Next, we go to the one, which means two steps. The first of them is with the C, we do the doubling, very good. And with a D, we do the squaring. Yes, oh, down we always square, up we, uh, so nine square is 81, which mod 11, congruent with, 77 plus 4, it's 4. And then because it's a 1, on the top we are going to add it, very good. And on the bottom we
this is this algorithm is called square and multiply square and that's the name of the algorithm so we multiply we multiply with a base adding a one in the exponent means we multiply with the base so we multiply four times three four times three equals 12 with mod 11 uh 12 sorry which mod 11 congruent to one okay next it's a zero so it's a zero the square and multiply becomes only square so this uh, five uh what do we do with it? Times two becomes 10, very good. And on the bottom, we, what do we do with the one? We square it and it becomes one. And it's a zero, that's all we do. Again, another zero. We Again, we only do what? With the 10, we do what? We, on the top, double so it becomes 20 and on the bottom we do what we square very good one square and that's all we do because it's a zero then on the top we do what do we on the top we got 40 very good times two and on the bottom we we get a square and we still get one keep going on on the top we get 80 is the value we are looking for and on the bottom we square once again one and we get one now notice something interesting here we get only ones at the end can you say why and when will we get only once? That was a question I also asked last time in class, and I've got an email answer from Asail. So if you remember last time, we were at some moment getting only once, and Asail gave me the answer. So here, why do we get only once in this case first? Yeah, last time it was because p minus 1 was the power of 2. Here, p minus 1 is not a power of 2, right? p was 80, uh, p was 11, p minus 1 was 10, was not a power of 2. So why do, why do we have a repeated sequence of 1? Because? because the end of the bits were a repeating sequence of zero. Okay, so when the end is a repeating sequence of zero, then as soon as you get a one, you only, yeah, the last bits, okay, that's good. The last bits will keep remaining only one with this algorithm. It's different from the previous algorithm. With the previous algorithm, when you get a, uh, the condition was different. Let me re return to the previous algorithm. And I'm going to go a little bit fast over that because I see the time it's um, today we were shortened by the reboot of the laptop. Um, so in the previous algorithm, you noticed that we were having repetitions with only ones uh in uh, here we were having repetitions in this particular case because p was five five minus one was four was the power of two that's what asai also uh remarked and from the previous video she heard the previous video where i was explaining it uh, namely when uh five uh, uh p minus one it's only it's one it's a multiple of four then we get only once in h and because we get only once in h 
the values of d repeat, we have a pattern. Uh, those, these patterns are very important, and we see the importance next. This is a different pattern. We get d being only once. In this particular case, d was only once. Because we had only zero, so as soon as we have a one, we get only once. And there's one more important pattern, which I'm not, I'm going to just show you fast. So when we compute 2 at power 80 mod 5, we get here only once as well. Uh, as soon as we get a one, we get only once. But that's, there's something else to see. What is before the one? Here, when the zero ends, before the one, we still had the one, that's the explanation. Otherwise, we had just ones. But here, there are still zeros. And before the ones, there's something else than zero. There's a four. What's special about four, not five? And this is an important, very good axis. It's p minus one. And we cannot get anything else in front of one than either p minus one or one when we had the sequence of ones, uh, of zeros. And I let you tell me that for a bonus by mail because the time has passed. Uh, OK, so why in front of ones? This is a question. You can get only either one or a p minus one, as long as you have only zeros in the exponent. So please let me know that. OK, that's going to be for a bonus. And not only it's going to be for a bonus, it will be essential in the next lecture.